Hey guys, welcome back to Travel Global. Today we'll talk about the top 10 things to do in Miami. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's head into it. Number 10, Jungle Island. Jungle Island is a botanical garden, a bird sanctuary, and a wildlife refuge. In tropical forest settings, parrots and other exotic birds abound, some of which perform regular shows. Tigers, baboons, alligators, tortoises, monkeys, and orangutans are among the largest animals featured in the park. Heliconias, bananas, orchids, and bromeliads are among the 2,000 native plants found in the gardens. Choose from cuddling with lemurs, sloths, pink flamingos, or a capybara as part of your adventure here. Apart from the animals, there is a climbing wall, a tree walk village, and a large playground area to enjoy. Number nine, Zoo Miami. More than 3,000 wild animals, including 40 endangered species, are housed at Zoo Miami. Unlike many typical zoos, animals here are housed in environments that are close to their natural habitats and are grouped with other species in which they would naturally coexist peacefully in the wild. Feeding the giraffes is one of the most enjoyable activities at the zoo. These gentle giants will astound children as they reach down with their long necks to pluck a treat from their hands. In the continental US, this is the only zoo with a subtropical climate. On the grounds, there are over 1,000 different tree and plant species, including a wide array of orchids. Children will find plenty of entertainment options. If they're bored with the animals, they can head over to the play areas and enjoy some splashing around at the water-themed play area. Number eight, Bayfront Park. Bayfront Park is a 32-acre green space next to the Bayside Marketplace on the east side of Biscayne Boulevard. Several interesting monuments and sculptures can be found in the park. The electronically powered Pepper Fountain is one of its unique features. The Challenger Memorial, which honors the crew of the Challenger spacecraft, the Light Tower, an amphitheater that hosts a variety of musical events, and a children's playground are among the other attractions. Locals sometimes visit simply to run or walk on the paved trails. Number seven, Little Havana and Calle Ocho. Little Havana, Miami's Cuban district, is renowned for its distinct cultural scene, rather than its abundance of tourist attractions. The streets are lined with restaurants and specialty food stores, and Latin music fills the air. Locals congregate in public areas to socialize. Murals depicting significant Cuban figures and scenes from everyday life adorn the walls of buildings. The district's main thoroughfare, Calle Ocho, is where much of the action takes place, but Little Havana extends well beyond it into the surrounding streets and avenues. The region provides plenty of opportunities for people watching. This is, of course, the place to go for Cuban food. The Calle Ocho Festival, held in March, is a celebration of Cuban culture and the largest of its kind in the world. Over the years, this street festival has expanded to include more Latin American cultures and is now a great way to experience Latin American music and Caribbean cuisine. Number six, Bayside Marketplace. Bayside Marketplace is a massive outdoor style mall with over 150 specialty and tourist shops, as well as a variety of cafes and restaurants and regular live entertainment. There are several well-known chain stores, as well as many exclusive one-of-a-kind establishments for visitors to enjoy. The market attracts both locals and visitors. The mall is built along Miami's waterfront with views of docks and vessels, as the name suggests. Many visitors simply come to take in the experience. From here, tour boats depart for destinations across Biscayne Bay. A water taxi service is also available to and from Miami Beach and the downtown hotels in the city. Number five, Everglades National Park. Just a short drive from Miami, Everglades National Park preserves one of Florida's most unusual natural features. Alligators, crocodiles, snakes, and birds live in these swamplands, which occupy 1.5 million acres. The whole region is simply a shallow river that flows out to sea. 
A visitor's center, as well as walking trails and boardwalks for wildlife watching, are located within the park. The Anhinga Trail, which begins at the Royal Palm Visitor Center, is one of the park's most famous walking trails. This trail is less than a mile long, but it passes through terrain where alligators and other predators are likely to be seen. This trail is wheelchair accessible as well. One of the most enjoyable ways to experience the Everglades is on an airboat tour. These high-speed boat trips take visitors out into the marshes and streams to see alligators and other wildlife. The Miami Everglades Airboat Adventure with Transport Half Day Tour provides transport from your hotel to the park, includes a 30-minute airboat ride, a live alligator show at the Everglades Alligator Farm, and transport back to your hotel. Number four, Vizcaya Museum and Gardens. The lavish winter home of 20th century industrialist James Deering built on 28 acres, is now a national historic landmark. The mansion, which was built in 1916, has 34 rooms arranged around a central courtyard. The Vizcaya project needed over 1,100 staff and craftsmen, many of whom were brought in from Europe to ensure design authenticity. The impressive collection of European furniture and decorative arts from the 15th to 19th centuries is housed in the Italian Renaissance-style villa. The Grounds and gardens contain beautiful Italian and French fountains, pools, and sculptures. A breakwater at the base of the steps leading into Biscayne Bay is an ornately carved barge featuring female figures. Number three, South Beach. South Beach is a beautiful stretch of sand located at the southern end of Miami Beach. In the same named neighborhood, this long stretch of beach faces the ocean. This is the most popular beach in Miami and one of the top beaches in Florida, and it's always crowded in the summer. It's a place to see and be seen, but it's also a place to swim and enjoy the shallow waters, cool off and relax. The beach is lined with a paved walkway and Ocean Drive runs behind it, where cars cruise slowly by and take in the sights. Number two, Art Deco Historic District. Even if you don't care for the ocean, a visit to Miami Beach's Art Deco Historic District is worthwhile. The fashionable South Beach neighborhood is dominated by this architectural style, which was prominent in the 1930s and 1940s. Following a catastrophic hurricane in 1926, these one-of-a-kind structures were designed in a variety of pastel colors and with huge neon signs. The majority of the hotels and restaurants have been beautifully renovated. Awnings on the lower levels of these buildings offer shade for outdoor dining areas along some of the main streets. Ocean Drive and Collins Avenue are the two main streets through the area. If you're interested in staying in one of these historic gems, many of the Art Deco buildings still function as hotels and have much more character than modern hotels. Number one, Miami Beach. Miami Beach is a blend of quiet suburbs, vibrant entertainment focused areas, and long stretches of soft sand beaches. Located on a barrier island linked to the mainland by a series of bridges. One of the key attractions for tourists is South Beach and the Art Deco Historic District, which features pastel structures from the 1930s and early 1940s with iconic neon signs. This is an expensive tourist district with numerous beachfront restaurants, stores, hotels, and plenty of opportunities for sunbathing. Ocean Drive, a section of road located along the oceanfront and home to some beautiful Art Deco buildings, is the most prominent street in this city. Collins Avenue is one block inland, running parallel to Ocean Drive. Collins Avenue, or State Route A1A, is Miami Beach's main oceanfront route, connecting a number of neighborhoods. Would you like to travel and see all of these places? What do you think is the best one on our list? Which one seems the most fun? Leave us a comment below and make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our future travel videos. With that, I'll see you in the next video.